Well, hello, friends. It's when I feel like it o'clock. And I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you live from the basement of my Seattle apartment, yo. Even though I live in Alberta. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to see what the upstairs of my Seattle apartment look for, I, looks like, I do a show between 3 and 5 Eastern. Five days a week. It'll be on today. You want to check it out. And uh, we talk hockey and everything like that. Anyways, I'm doing a little series about Eichel being traded to everybody. And for the next one, I went with the most letters I got from people asking, you know, to do one on a certain team or what have you. And I and I had offers. Now, I'm not going to mention their names. The, but thank you for your letters. We love your letters. Guido goes down every day to the mailroom and brings them up and pours them all over the letter table. And we do the Perlo dance together. That's Hernandez, Melissa, the Perlo copter drivers, who will send you a, a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, helico- Perlo copter to your door by hitting the subscribe button right now. Right now. There you go. Dee, dee, dee. There. Makes you feel good in your insides, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, Helen, the one that sews the Pearls of Wisdom necklaces up and all of that, we all get like, really excited. It's great. So send your letters. But we had two teams and we had offers and stuff like that. And, okay, I want to look at these teams. One of them is not very likely to be able to do so. The other one, maybe more so. But, and it's going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vegas Golden Knights who are now you know, going into Game 7 as we speak. Uh, well, will be tonight against Minnesota. Pretty exciting stuff. And uh, we'll see if they can pull off a Jack Eichel, uh, those two. I got a lot of letters from it and people that really wanted to. And then I got some people that wrote in saying, no, I don't want that. Like uh, Pele, Pele Putin. From uh, Evans, Evansburg, Evansville, France, wrote in saying, I hope Toronto doesn't even think about it. Not a sniff. Don't want any part of it. All that stuff. All that. It's weird that it, I've never seen people polar opposite on a player in my life. There's people that are completely bullish on Eichel. And there's people that think he's just trash. And then there's people in the middle. So tell me what you think in the comment section about Eichel and uh, how he would do for your team. All right, let's look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, first of all, the first thing that's going to pop out right away is that Toronto is capped out. So if they were to do something like this, at uh, Eichel's making $10 million a year for the next five years, which for Eichel, a healthy Eichel. Remember, this is a healthy Eichel. He's coming back from injuries perfectly fine. I don't think anybody's trading him beforehand. I don't even think Buffalo's going to trade him beforehand because people are going to be lowballing, uh, you know, saying he's injured and we don't want to send, we don't want to uh, take a chance. All right. Could be wrong, but I, that's, that's my thinking here. The first thing that comes right out to me is that, you know, it would seem to me... Okay, here, let me look at the offers first. That's what I'll do. I'll look at the offers first. We had an offer for Tavares, who, of course, is injured right now. And uh, draft picks, maybe uh, Rasmus Sandin. And, uh, no, it was Rasmus Sandin, Timothy Lilligren, Tavares in first-round picks, Okay. On the surface, that looks like a fair deal. But uh, Tavares is making, first of all, $11 million a year. That shouldn't be too much of a problem for Buffalo. What would be a problem, I think, with this deal, where are their injuries? Tavares, here we go, $11 million. Yes, I was right, $11 million a year. There's several problems with this. Tavares is also 30 years old. I don't think that, and not only that, He's got to have a no-movement clause, right? He's got a no-movement clause. So the odds of Tavares going to Buffalo, waving to go to Buffalo, is pretty much slim slim to none for one. Also, the way that Toronto went and got Tavares, basically stealing him from the Islanders, 
um, robbing them. It, it was a weird situation going on there. I think there was a lot of talking behind closed doors that they didn't have to give them up in a trade. My feeling is, and I have no proof of this, so please don't say, you know, whatever. I'm not spreading a rumor that's that it's true. But I think they were talking to Tavares and say, wait it out so we don't have to send anybody back and, uh, you know, make it look good. I, I could be wrong, but it certainly looked like that to me. And I think the Islanders kind of got that impression as well. Anyways, when they finally did get him on free agency, they coaxed him over there a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, it just would not look good for the organization, for the players that are there, that they all of a sudden would go and do that to him after they basically sold him in every direction possible to come to Toronto. I, I, I just can't see Tavares being part of the deal. But I understand it. I get it. It makes sense as far as value is concerned to a certain extent. But I don't see it happening. So if Tavares is not part of the deal, then we have to ask the question, you have Tavares as a third line center, Matthews is or second line center, Matthews is the first. Do they even go after Eichel at all? You would have to have Tavares, you would have the deepest center position in the planet. But okay, let's say they decide to do that. They want to be like the deepest center team ever that ever maybe even existed. <laughs> if you had Matthews, Eichel, and Tavares. You would have to, for sure, give up Nylander, who's looking like a beast right now. Like, I, I've, I've been saying that for quite some time. When people were poo-pooing -poo Nylander, I said, don't worry, he's going to be great. Just let him get over the contract issues and all that stuff like that. Here he is putting seven points in five games up for Toronto right now. Gal Nylander would have to be part of the deal, I would think. Uh, again, you're not giving up any centers here. So... Uh, you're not giving up Matthews. You're, uh, we already talked about Tavares. So we're going for the deepest center position possible. Nylander, in the deal. Uh, somebody like Rasmus Sandin, in the deal. And that is might even be a deal breaker right there. Because even though Sandin is nowhere near the player that Eichel is, and never will be, the value to your team. Rasmus Sandin, the value to Sandin to this team as he grows, he's only 21 years old. He's kind of struggling a bit in the playoffs right now. But he's going to be a very good defenseman. And he's one of the few that are coming up that will be in Toronto. And they so need that so bad. Um, then, I mean, just go down the list, whatever prospects you can put together, which basically would... Uh, uh, Nicholas Robertson um, would be one. Timothy Lilligren, you know, just throw everything else you can out there. He might get away because Nylander is so good. If 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 Buffalo sees what I see in Nylander, maybe Nylander and Sandine or and first round picks would be enough. It's possible. I would consider it for Eichel. Because I th I, I'm that bullish on Nylander. The thing is, though, and I had so many, uh, I had so many people writing in about this. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I just don't think it makes sense for Toronto to go after a guy like Eichel. Sorry, everybody. Um, there was one person that said Mitchell Marner, Mitch Marner, straight across for Eichel. Um, something that you would have to consider if you were Buffalo, because. Uh, I'd say as a winger, he's pretty darn close. He's a, he's a hundred and some point player. Now, he's, that's playing with Matthews, but still. Um, I just don't think Toronto would do that. Uh, I don't think Toronto would do that deal because they're so stacked up the middle. Mitchell Marner's value to their team is greater than Eichel's value to their team. You see, is Eichel better than Marner? I, I've said this before. I do believe if he was on a really good team, and had really good wingers, somebody like Nylander, for instance, and uh, you know a great energy and a winning attitude and all of that that Toronto seems to have built here. He could be a 120 point play center, play uh, point center, with Selkie Trophy nomination. So, 
I, I think he is slightly better than Marner as a player in the long run. Now, you're going to say, well, he hasn't showed it yet. Okay, it, it, he has sort of, if you look at his matrix, he, he's getting better and better defensively all the time. This last year, he was a beast. And that's on a very poor team. So, But I just don't think the value to Toronto is there. Unless you're going to trade the, the person that said, if somehow you could convince Tavares... Then maybe yes, that then I would. If you could convince Buffalo to take Tavares for Tavares to go to Buffalo and then make you know add some pieces on top of it to make that deal, I would say yes. Toronto would consider that. But like I said, the way it would the 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 uh, message to the players after doing what they did to get Tavares to me would make it very unlikely that would happen. Very unlikely he would say yes to go to Buffalo. Uh, and very unlikely that Buffalo would be looking at a 30-year-old center in return. So not very likely is what I'm trying to say. There you go. Thank you for all your letters. Thank you for, uh, you know, it's awesome to – that's what I think too. Who knows? You Tell me what you think. Do you think there's any possibility whatsoever? Tell me in the comment section. Now another very interesting one. We're going to go to the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, for the Vegas Golden Knights, you've got – let me get this a little bigger. I, hopefully you guys can see this all right. Tell me. For the Vegas Golden Knights, you never know with this organization what they're going to do. I mean, I never saw them going to get Peter Angelo in the offseason. Um, so it's I'm going to say it's possible, but it's still unlikely because of depth issues for Vegas. They have definitely need a top line center, no doubt about that. They definitely like the sexy pick pickups, um, Stone, Peter Angelo, you know, heavy high high market guys with character. People question Eichel's character. I don't. You put Eichel on this team, he would be an absolute. He would absolutely destroy. It would be unbelievable if you put Eichel on a line with Stone and Alex Tuck, as you see right here. That's where I'm looking at possibly 120 point centerman. So this is if if you're already saying no, think about this for a second. It would take Chandler Stevenson for sure, who isn't really who who really is shouldn't be a top two center in the league, but he does very well in the spot, considering he's not one. Um, he certainly has been able to find a niche for himself. Um, it would take Stevenson and William Carlson. So, or Glass. And I think they, uh, I don't know, they're struggling with Glass. Uh, Glass is having a little bit of, of a time um, progressing right now. So I don't know what his perceived value is at the moment. But I'm thinking that, and I did a, also did a video on Buffalo and where they might be going, what they might be looking for here. I think Buffalo is going to be looking for players for now and players for later. So in this sense, this works out really well. Now, that would mean that you would have to be very high on glass still because glass is now going to be playing one of the, your second line spot. Maybe Nicholas Waugh. He's been getting better. Um, but as you can see, you got Patrick Brown now in the center position, uh, playing a lot more minutes than maybe he should. Um Guys in the minors, Dylan Sakura is probably not a regular in the NHL. You see, their depth is not fantastic, and that's what really makes this difficult. Uh, Brandon Bryson, they just picked up in 2020. How did he do this year? Did he even play? Yeah, NCAA, 21 points in 24 games is pretty good. You could throw him in there. Maybe not all together here, but these are guys that they could look at. The thing is, though, once you get rid of Brandon Bryson, uh, Ivan Morozov has put up some pretty decent points, but I wouldn't say he's like top-notch prospect or anything like that. Once, if Vegas were to trade these guys, they have basically no depth whatsoever. This is an all-in move. Chandler Stevenson, William Carlson, um, Bryson, uh Looking at defense, maybe Nicholas Hag uh, and first round picks. And I don't even, the thing with this is uh, saying all this, 
If you go into my other videos that I've been doing on this topic, like the LA Kings and the New York Rangers and all of those teams like that, they already have this beat. They already have this beat as it is. If I'm, if it's me, if I'm Buffalo, I am not making this deal personally without Alex Tuck. I absolutely love, 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 love this guy. I think he's still got a lot of upside. He's big. He's fast. Uh, I want Alex Tuck, William Carlson, um, Nicholas Hag. Uh, you know, maybe you say Peyton Krebs is off the table because you're going to need a forward to replace that. Okay, we'll go that direction. And um, Dylan Coughlin, I really like him a lot. You know, it, that it's going to take a package, something like that. So if we're looking at people were writing or and talk, asking, saying things like William Carlson, Riley Smith in a first. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not going to do it. Uh, you know, somebody said Alex Peter Angelo. They just brought him over. I don't think they're going to want to. Again, sometimes deals don't get made because how it's going to affect the outlook of their team, how it's going to affect the energy of their team. And if if uh, a team starts using players like they're not human, you know, you just bring a guy over, he sets his family down, you build a relationship with them, and then you're like, okay, yeah, whatever, we're just going to send you off. That's terrible for the, uh, for the environment of an organization. And you've seen that with the team that's possibly doing this deal with Eichel, if it ever happens. Um, they've done that. They basically have treated, a lot of times they have treated players like they were just pawns that they would throw somewhere else and pick somebody else up. Um, and, uh, you know, it didn't look good. The O'Reilly situation with Buffalo, where he just, you know, said some truthful things that there was a culture problem in the organization. They get, they throw him away like he's nothing, you know. And ever since that trade, Buffalo has been just going downhill huge, especially since he goes and wins a cup with St. Louis right after that. So anyways, those are some guys that you'd be looking at. And if you look at the organization, if I take Alex Tuck away, now Jonathan Marcheseau is up on your top left. Uh, you might be able to re-sign Matthias Janmark and put him up here. And you've got uh, Stone, Eichel, and... Uh, Marcia so now, which is weird because they this has always been a line. Marcia so Carlson and Smith, they've stuck with that line forever. Or maybe Anmark, or maybe you got to try to find to go uh, go out and get someone else. And this hasn't really, I haven't even talked here. Even if you do this Alex Tuck deal, there's got to be more to it because you, Vegas can't afford to take on any contracts right now. Um, now, I'm just going to look to see if anything's coming off the books. If they can find a way to lose Flurry's contract, who after having a Vesna-like uh, year, they might be able to do that, then, they're then they might not be doing too bad. But uh, Riley Smith is going to have a contract in a couple of years. That's not that big of a deal. You can work around that. Um, yeah, that's really – they're going to have to find a way to get Flurry off the books. So that's another player gone they to add to the deal basically once a team has to start looking at players they have to let go to make room for the player they're bringing in that sort of adds to the deal is it possible that vegas could do something like this it is actually because vegas has shown that they're willing to do things that are way outside of the box and have seem to have plans that most people don't think about uh to add to their lineup and all of that. They're very confident in themselves and how they can do make moves and fill in their roster and all of those sort of things like that. I could see them being in there looking at this possibility. I could definitely see it. Toronto, on the other hand, I don't see it. So anyways, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give today. Uh, tell me in the comment section who a team that you would like to hear if I haven't did it already. Uh, also, um, of course, send your letters, hit the subscribe and the bell and come and join this frolic daily as they, uh, as the, uh, notifications come to you. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.